Good evening. Marty Gabler here, and I've just been worshiping and soaking in some beautiful anointed soaking music and reading from Psalm 69. Welcome to Beside Still Waters. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us the Good Shepherd Jesus to lead us beside still waters. We gladly join him beside those still waters. His wisdom, his love, his compassion and leading us there or leading us to still waters. Thank you, Lord God. It seems like the news, at least in Texas, is full of stories about floods and rising waters. Uh, I have a friend who lives uh, on the Frio River and he has put up several videos of how high the water is on that river and how widespread it is and how rapidly it's flowing. I have noticed other friends putting notices on Facebook about the floods in the Central Texas area, Kingsland and other areas that are receiving a lot of rainfall. And uh, I've also noticed a couple of notices on Facebook where uh, a couple of my friends have said, okay, uh, if you're praying for rain, it's really worked well. Uh, it's time to change to praying over another matter now. <laughs> but when you're around flooding waters, rising waters, Hurricanes have come into this area here in the Cold Spring area on Lake Livingston where Kathy and I live. Uh, it can be pretty hair raising when you've got, you know, four and five foot waves on a lake and uh, water is rising and the, all the gates on the dam are open and they are tonight right now. I just came from that direction and uh, all 12 gates on the Lake Livingston Dam are open and the river is up over its banks into the park there near the dam. Uh, those waters threaten. They threaten lives, they threaten people, game wardens, local law enforcement, uh, news reporters are warning people about the rising waters and the flooding waters. Uh, it seems that the psalmist spoke of rising waters and troublesome waters numerous times throughout the Psalms. That, that I've been praying for our friends in Central Texas. I've been praying for uh, the people of God to be protected by angelic intervention and by the hand of Jehovah. And as I'm reading Psalm 69, there are several scriptures in Psalm 69 that mention water. Uh, Psalm, verse 1 of Psalm 69, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, says, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. They threaten my life. Many times water is a type of threatening circumstances or overwhelming circumstances. Uh, I think there are a couple of biblical writers who have mentioned the waters that come over my head. Those are, are waters that threaten to smother, that threaten to drown. And that's the kind of thing David is dealing with in Psalm 69 when he says, Save me, O God, verse 1, for the waters have come up to my neck. They threaten my life. David is being opposed. He has many enemies. Uh, you and I don't necessarily always have uh, enemies in the form of persons who want to do us harm or to prevent our progress. 
but uh, the workers of darkness, the workings in darkness, uh, the desire of Satan to destroy and to work against righteousness, those things can build up and, and circumstances can build up until where we feel like the psalmist that water has come up to our neck. So he cries out to God. What are the first two words of Psalm 69? Save me. And then the next two words are, O oh God. Before we get any further, O oh Lord God, into considering the individual matters that have caused troubled times and troubled waters in our lives and in our environment, we just want to cry out like the psalmist did as our example right off the bat crying out, Save us, O God. Jehovah God. The God who saves Israel. The God who is faithful to those who look to Him and call upon His name. Your ear is not deaf that it cannot hear, nor is your arm short, the reach of your hand short that it cannot save. Your God. Verse 2 of Psalm 69, we're talking about rising waters, troublesome, troubled waters, troubled circumstances. Psalm 69, 2 says, I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters where the floods overwhelm me. It sounds like he's saying there are times when he simply can't get a breath. I speak right now, Father, to my friends. Wow, I, this is a word of knowledge. There are some people who are so overwhelmed and so stressed. You've had a panic attack today. Maybe more than one panic attack today. Maybe every day this week. Maybe you just tuned in to Beside Still Waters uh, hoping for some kind of relief from the panic. I speak to you, peace. I tell you that the master of the storm who stood in the bow of the boat when he and the disciples were crossing the lake and simply, it's my conviction that he just spoke in a conversational tone because of who he is what he knows and what he can do. Jesus stood in the bow of that boat full of troubled disciples who were soaking wet with overwhelming waves getting into their boat. You don't want waves in your boat. That's not where they belong. But in the midst of that, the master of the storm said, Peace, be still. Someone is getting peace right now. Peace is not a thing. Peace is a person. I speak peace to that panic. Peace to that troubled inability to get a good deep breath. Your chest is so tight from the distress of overwhelming circumstances and I'm speaking imitating our Lord Jesus I want to imitate Jesus and I'm imitating Jesus in the behalf of my friends tonight and I'm saying when cease waves cease peace be still he said verse 2 I sink in the deep mire where there is no foothold he couldn't find any place down there that was solid. I've come into deep waters where the floods overwhelm me. The beginning of verse 3 there, he says, I am weary with my crying. These circumstances haven't been brief, and they haven't just happened today or in this hour. They've happened over a period of time, perhaps the same ones repeatedly. 
but he starts out by saying, Save me, God. Let's go to verse 14 of Psalm 69 and the Amplified. It says, Rescue me out of the mire. Now, he has just said in the last verse we read, I'm stuck deep in the mire and I can't find a foothold. It, it's like I'm sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. There's no foothold in the mire. It's like mud and gunk. Rescue me out of the mire, verse 14, and let me not sink. Just the weight and density of my body causes me to sink in mire and mud and water. The human body is much more dense than water. That's why it was so awesome when Jesus came walking on the troubled waters to his disciples because the density, and he had a real body, but the density of that real body was not the highest government. Jesus, King Jesus, who is king and master over every storm and kind of storm. That's the higher government. That's why he could walk on water. The higher government, higher than gravity, higher than density. I call him Jesus. I call you Jesus, the highest governor, the highest government. And the prophet Isaiah said, you bear government on your right shoulder. Hallelujah. And your government is higher than everything my friends are dealing with tonight, Jesus. Overwhelm them right now. Their circumstances have overwhelmed them. And I'm asking you, Jesus, in your blessed presence, with your Holy Spirit, just overwhelm them. Land on them like a blanket. Wrap around them like a hug. I pray you bid your angels minister to them. Warring angels, guardian angels, ministering spirits. Rescue me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me and from out of the deep waters. Satan hates you. You might not can write down a list of names of people who truly, deeply hate you. Some of you can. Our Lord is delivering you. And I declare to you that you do not have to succumb to the intents of their hatred and their hateful words. Curse undeserved cannot light, cannot land, cannot dwell, cannot stay but like the bird and the starlings that flitter, the Bible says, they must fly back. I send back curses to where they came from. Mm. For those who would curse people in our nation who would dare take a stand for righteousness, I declare that the curse undeserved will not land Verse 15 of Psalm 69 says, Let not the floodwaters overflow and overwhelm me. <laughs> His powerful hand is better than a dam that holds back water. Let not the floodwaters overflow and overwhelm me. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when infirmity, disease, demons were overwhelming people, Numerous times in the Gospels it talks about how Jesus touched someone. Blindness was overwhelming many people in the Gospels. And there were times when the Bible said Jesus touched them. No longer did blindness and darkness overwhelm them. The deep waters of blindness, but they were healed. I speak to you to be healed. Whatever's flooding over your head. Let not the flood waters overflow and overwhelm me, neither let the deep swallow me up, nor the dug pit with water in the bottom close its mouth over me. See, a while ago he was talking about not finding any purchase, no foothold in the mire. Now he's talking about a deep pit. 
and being down in that. But I declare to you, the Lord is delivering you out of the pit. The Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 16, it says, Hear and answer me. Psalm 69, verse 16. Hear and answer me, O Lord, for... I, I love the word for. Can't leave that word out. For your loving kindness is sweet. Taste his loving kindness and its sweetness. Somebody's getting a touch from God tonight. The Prince of Peace has walked in upon you, Jesus. Mm. He's reaching down. He's lifting you out of the miry clay. He's lifting you out of the deep pit. He's lifting you out of the waters that are up to your neck. Your loving kindness is sweet and comforting. Thank you, Jesus, for your sweet and loving, comforting kindness that is upon my friends and in their home right now, around them and that computer, around them and their their bed. And, and when they stand in that hot shower tonight or early in the morning, I, I just pray that as the water flows over them to cleanse them, that it would be more than just a physical cleansing but that your presence would cleanse them from hopelessness and despair. Cleanse them from the words and the curses that have been spoken over them. I break those curses in Jesus' name. They cannot alight. The curse undeserved cannot light upon you. Your loving kindness is sweet and comforting. <sighs> Just had to take that deep breath. Wow, those words, your loving kindness is sweet. Comforting. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm getting something here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that sweet comforting. According to your plenteous tender mercy and steadfast love, turn to me. Ah. <laughs> As blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. So we cry out this night, those that are stuck, stuck without a purchase or a foothold in the deep mire, pull them out. Those that are up under the burden and the crushing waves of circumstances and hurts, injustices, pull them out, mighty Jesus. The same Jesus that heard Bartimaeus' cry and reached out a hand to him and lifted him up and out of his condition so that he could no longer be labeled blind Bartimaeus. They had to go back to calling him simply Bartimaeus or Eagle Eye Bartimaeus because Jesus, you are the governor, you are the king, your government is higher than every pounding wave and rushing wind. And in imitating you, my Lord and my Savior, I reach out to my friends tonight and I say, Peace, be still. Settle nerves. Heartbeat, settle down to normal in Jesus' name. Twitching eye and shaking hands. Settle, I say, peace, be still. Tormented mind, considering the what ifs. I tell you, mind, settle down. Jesus is your prince. Of peace. <laughs> oh, stapari men non We worship you, Prince of Peace. Your sweetness, your counsel. Thank you. Bless your name. The risen Christ. 
is on your side and he's in the bow of your boat, it's not going under. The Lord raised you up tonight through his resurrection power, through his compassion, through his sweet comfort. Somebody needs to just say, I receive it, Lord. I receive it tonight. Blessings on you, blessings on the rest of your night. And I declare to you, you are going to walk in peace tomorrow. You're going to lie down upon your bed tonight and rest in peace. It's not going to be tossing and turning. It's going to be peaceful. And His sweet comfort is going to cover you like a blanket. Bless you and your little ones. Bless your home, your walls, your rooms, your hallways. For the Lord is with you. He is your strength. Have a blessed night through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Prince of Peace. Blessings, my friends.